Hey, hey, folks. We're here to tell you about Sheath. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Boy, we love Sheath. I pretty much wear them every day. I threw out all my uh, my Hanes and my panties. And, uh, yeah, we love Sheath. It, it's got the separator for the cod and the berries, the uh, the twig and the tackle. It's a great time. Your dick and balls have been smushed together for 48 centuries. Let's separate the two and give them some me time. Separate but equal. Yes, segregation is the key. So, uh, yeah, get on some sheet. They feel good. They look good. I've never looked better in a pair of uh, skivvies. It came from a founder of the U.S. Army, Robert Patton, during his second tour in Iraq. I bet it's hot out there. You know, those your cods have got to be sticking to those thighs out in the desert. I spent some time there, and I would have killed for a pair of uh, sheath underwear. You got that. Support the awesome veteran-owned company. Uh, he's a Tuesday himself and a big comedy fan, so get a pair. Feel better. Tell him how fatty. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order promo order with promo code TUESGAYS. That's right, TUESGAYS to get 20% off your first order and Sheath Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls. Yeehaw! Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah. This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, uh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. A lot of hair. Hey, we're here, everybody. It's Tuesdays with Stories. I am Joseph Albert List. That's Mark Marie Talamash List. Norman. <laughs> uh, Couldn't yes. think of your last name. Well, I think after it's common law after a while, me and you have uh, made love so many times, you know. Boy, it's been a long time. Isn't it weird to think about this podcast? Ooh. Ups and downs, over and outs, and just a nice steady... <laughs> and eventually, we'll peak and, and plummet. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we... We made us. We might have started at the bottom, and I think we're plateaued somewhere on the second tier. But think about all the people who've died in our run. I mean, left and right podcasts falling. Families are always rising and falling in America. You got that right. I'm uh, my yeast is risen, as is Jesus. But uh, that's a good trivia. Like, how many podcasts have begun and ended in the tenure that we've been going? Ooh. I, I, I'm going to say hundreds of thousands. I mean, tons and tons, and big ones, too, I think. I mean, remember In the Tank with John Fish and Dan oh, Shackley? I used to love that pod. That was big. That was like, it felt big anyways. Yeah, they would get, you know, they'd get Bobby Kelly. I was like, they got Bobby Kelly. Whoa, what a Rolodex. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, let's see. What, what else? You know, Rogan went to Spotify. Kill Tony got arrested. Uh, Shab and the other guy went to hell. So it's all topsy turvy. It's all pipes, but yeah, it's been, I mean, I guess, I mean, it's been eight years now. Eight oh, years. September yeah. will be eight years. Yeah, we, we, we booted hyenas, I'll tell you that. Yeah, hyenas is out. They're dead. They killed each other or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's what hyenas do. They eat their own. What else has got? Legion of Skanks has been going. They started before us, I think. I think so, yeah, yeah. Well, there's, a, there's been a couple out there. Is is uh, What's that one called that's out in Queens? Keith and the Keith Girl? Keith and the Girl! That one was huge. huge. That was like the first podcast, that I That was think. in like in the 80s they were going. That was, I remember that podcast, and I didn't understand what a podcast was. Mm. That's what's weird about podcasts, because now it feels like it's such a part of the zeitgeist. vernacular, zeitgeist, uh, Zionist, Atmosphere, Israel. Yeah, but, Palestine. But there was a time, I remember going, they did the marathon thing, yes. and then people were like, we're going to go out to Keith and the Girl, they're doing a podcast marathon. Yes. And I remember being like, what is a podcast? Yes, same. Well, it's a radio show, but it's filmed, and you can listen to it later. I'm like, filmed? Who would film the radio? I didn't get any of it, but... It was big. I mean, that guy was selling out clubs for years. Yeah, I think he only did a couple of shows a year and would just bring it and bang it or whatever. Yeah, and I didn't really believe in it. I was like, oh, I'll go do it. I have literally nothing else going for me at this stage of my career. 
And uh, then after a while, I just didn't want to go to Queens. You got to feel for all the radio guys, because all these people built their life on radio, and then they were like, podcast, shut up, what's a podcast, who cares? And now here we are. Remember the famous uh, Ari Howard Stern beef? Yes. The two, the two biggest Jew faces on the planet, uh, be- beefing it out. Uh, oh, you got to be a real broadcaster. And Ari's like, shut up, you boomer, even though Ari's probably older than him somehow. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of those ones where I get it because Stern's like, I've never even heard of this guy. And people were like, no, he does really well, but he doesn't do as well as Stern. Of course. But I don't, I don't Who know. Who does? Who knows what's I miss what? The, whatever happened to Imus, that nappy-headed hoe. I think he died, right? What? Pretty sure he died. Damn. Maybe not, though. I think he's around just saying the N-word in a parking lot. No, I think he died. Didn't he die? Maybe he did die. I think he died and... Whatever, but anyways, we've been here a long time, and uh, every week, for God's sakes, hours and hours, and, and some of the old episodes are on the Patreon. Join the Patreon. We got a new TV thing going on. Hot gay sets. Chuck is doing it. Uh, Chuck, whatever his name is, Woolry. Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah, he's kicking ass. A couple of people complained about Chuck. If you're not liking uh, Chuck, I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, yeah, Your life screwed up. You were beaten as a child. Get out right now and get some some Prozac. Because if you don't like Chuck, I can't ha- I can't help you. He's videotaping. He's editing. We still got Shelby on the twos and ones. Fanny's sticking ads up our ass. I mean, we're having a great time. We got a whole team here. You got that right. And uh, we're giving you the best we got here. But the Patreon right now is like rocking. I mean, you got Woo-wee! video. We just did one yesterday, a random video. That was fun. Oh yeah. We came up with our best comedy club names. What'd you decide on, ball sacks? I thought of one uh, while showering and thinking of you. Laughing stock. Oh, okay. It's a little insulting. But laughing stock is bad. I know it's a pejorative, uh, but that's all I had. That's maybe, maybe that's a good. That's the soup they would serve. I think we ended with one yesterday, though. Didn't we come up with one at the end? Oh yeah. Wasn't it what Mark? Was it? Or something tits. Mark. No, Off the mark. You, you're stuck on Mark. You got skid mark, mark up your ass, oh, and you yeah. can't get away from it. But uh, yeah, either way, we we'll all come up with something by the end of it. I thought we had one on the queef. I thought that was we ended. Oh, we were yeah. like, okay, this wasn't bad. It was like a it was a mediocre. It was a five. Yeah. Fuck. What was it? Uh, we have to check the tape. Well, join the Patreon and and tell us. And then what else is on the Patreon? We got Musqueef TV yes. is on there. It, yes. It's really kicking ass. And there's a new hot gay set's coming out manana, so that'll be a fun one. Chuck is just sitting in a in a room with a pot of coffee and a like one of those green visors crunching numbers <laughs> just typing away, editing away. He's making magic out of a computer this kid. And a Beekman? Was that called a Beekman? A beaker. A beat with the lab. Yeah, with yes. the ball at the end of it, and the green stuff would be bubbling. Yes, weird science. He He's like, I think Beaker was a, a Muppet. Yeah, I think you're right. But was was Beekman a thing? Beekman. That's just a guy, I, I know, think. a Walkman. Wait, what hmm. did we say then? A Beaker. Beaker. Yeah, but it was yeah. a Muppet and a th- jar thing? Yeah, it's a Muppet named Beaker, and he went like, beep, 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 beep. Right. And he cursed a lot. Yeah, the Muppets were good. Yeah, they had a good run. That Jim Henson, he was another guy. Got shot down left and right. Everybody hated him. You'll never make it in this town. Dr. Seuss hated Jews, and he hey, and he's got shot down left and right. Then look at him now. They're all dead. And uh, J.K. Rowling, wasn't she have a thing? She yes. got cut from the basketball team or something right. like that. One of those. Right. Well, the WNBA, it's a, it's a tough roster for a honky lady. But either way, she pr- prospered. Is that where Prosper? Yeah, Prosper. Yeah. I always knew it from Spock. Live long and prosper. Yeah, he was the Jew in space. Is that right? First Jew out there. And Shatner's a Jew, too. Nobody's aware of it. No kidding. It's closeted. Wow. Most Jews are hiding in the closet. But either way, uh, it's good to be here. We're, I think we're running on eight years here. Yeah, it'll be, yeah, September will be nine. But we started recording earlier than that. So around this time, summer. Yeah. 2013, we did our first few episodes. Here, here. It was all your idea. You wanted to have 71 comics around a oh, dining table with two microphones. We had multiple guests. It started with two guests. It went yeah. down to one guest, and then we got rid of the guests. And now, ironically, every day I get an email being like, no pod succeeds with no guests. Yes. You can't have a guest. You got to yes. need a guest. But the, the guests, they can't hang. I'm sorry. I, I, you can't. You put a guest in here. It ruins the rapport. Yeah, we're just farting and calling them fags, and they get upset, and yep. it's, it's no good. So if we don't blow up, we don't blow up. What are you going to do? Yeah, we're not trying to blow up. We got a cool paycheck coming in right now. You can't complain. It, it, uh, it's pretty good. It's, it's steady. 
It's not breaking the bank, but it ain't spare change either. Oh, God. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Holy the hell. The there leak is. from the chair to the table was something out of uh, planet Earth. Oh, he's going to drink your Get water. Get out of the he's water. Come it. on he's with the gonna water. He's going to do it. Come on. Nothing yet. Nothing Get a yet. Cup. Get out of there. Yeah. Oh, oh, it slipped off the it table. Oh, oh, I feel terrible. I think. Oh, oh shit. God. There we go. Oh. It's all over. It's still sniffing. Well, he's got oh, the ice. It's licking. It's licking the ice. He's never had ice before. That's the first time for ice. Ice, baby. That's exciting. Well. By the way, some lady sent me a long email. I wanted to block her and shoot her, <laughs> but she's like, you're a cunt. Your wife hates you. You got to take. <laughs> you got to do some calisthenics. You're a big pussy. Oh, yeah. It's a bit. Also, it's a cat. I don't have to protect my wife from cats. Oh, yeah. Good point. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm like, I'm out walking around. I'm an adult. I'm doing well. You know, I, there's, a, there's a cat with jumping on my asshole, and it's big and furry. I don't care for it, but, yeah. you know. I can't believe my girlfriend sent you that email. But still, uh, the cat is drinking your water, and I'll get you a fresh one in about an hour. By the way, the lady called you a pussy, too. She's like, you're both cunts. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I can't believe it. This, there's no way this glass is going to stay standing. Not, not a good sign. Oh, boy. This cat's a booze bag that's vodka go into town i mean it sucks to not have opposable thumbs don't you wish the cat must want to pick this up and dump it over her head or of his head. course but he doesn't know about picking up and also the chin is just getting soaked it's, it's a shitty way to live you ever seen a cat or a dog drink in slow motion i don't think so it's pretty wild you can see it on youtube they put the tongue in and then they pull the tongue up so water shoots up and then they catch it what? That's how it works. I thought they have an absorbent tongue. I thought it was like a sponge what? tongue. No. Are you sure? No absorb. I think the tongue is a different kind of tongue, and the tongue is going in there. It does have a drippy chin. It looks like my wife on my birthday. <laughs> but I, I <laughs> thought the you. tongue was like it soaked it in. It just sticks no, the tongue in and no absorbs. Soak, no soak. Are you sure? We well, need then Shelby. It, then it would soak up saliva and, and drown or, or suffocate. What I do you do you with turn off. You... I think you turn off, off and on the thing. It's a water whore. Jesus Christ. You get one water, and it, that's it. You can't try them all. What is this, the Bunny Ranch? I don't like that you save your water and not mine. Well, you could have. You had chances. No, you reach in. It's your kid. It's like, you know kid. what I mean? It's like if you have a child oh, I and see. your kid takes a shit in my sneaker like I did as an adult. Sure. I can't go over and slap it. I need you to fucking kick I it in the asshole. I see. I can't be disciplining your cat. No, it's just, your cat. Just, 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 you're done. Yeah, but then I have to put my hand near it. I see. I see. All right. Well, now it's. Blowing the uh, the recorder here, the Zoom. I know. It's going to press a button and make it weird. Yeah. Well, you chill out with everything on the table, you goddamn coon. So, uh, yeah. I, where, where you been? What second? I'll get you a new water. I feel bad. Don't but, worry uh, about the water. I got a hot water over here. I got a tea, but sometimes my throat gets a little... <laughs> I get it. I get it. The I, semen is coated. I got. The, oh, God. It's Jesus. making me nervous on the buttons. It's on yeah. the twos and ones. Easy, DJ. Tanner. Oh, Jesus Christ, All right. this thing. There we go. Well, I've been, it's been a long time. So last it's been week, a long we, time. it's been a long time. Do, <laughs> do it together. What's that, Bob Marley? Oh, yeah. Since I've got Not you on my mind. mind. I think, uh, steer it up. Yeah, steer Little it up. That's right. Darling. Blow your dad. Eat he needs it. Kid out. Yeah, all right. So uh, what were you going to say there, Anyways, we, we teased a little bit because I was in Texas uh, a couple weeks ago now, but then I told the story about getting uh, accosted, mm. which the lady thought I was pussy for that, too, I Jesus. think. Jesus. But you got to pick your lady? battles. Yeah, I, I don't know. Fighter? What the she looked 65 years old. She had like curly hair. She looked like Harpo Marx in the picture, <laughs> but it was a small picture, and I blocked her. But Good. Block it up. But uh, little darling, I was out in Texas. I got to talk about Texas because I ended up right... Mac in the middle of some controversy. I don't know if you saw this. I believe some Asian hate. I was on uh, no Asian hate. Oh. I was on CNN, MSNBC, oh, BBC, that. the Different whole thing. Controversy, yeah. Yeah. So I went and did Rogan, which is exciting. And I, I did it before you, sons of bitches. You got that right. I mean, all these people are like, finally, I never thought I'd see the day. This is amazing. You get your big break. No looking back now. I'm like, I did the show nine years ago, you fucks. But uh, in your defense, it did get pulled from Spotify. That's true. And I think I just suck. Nobody cares. Nobody watches it. I think his viewers plummet when I'm on there. They see my big, dumb face, the weird teeth and the herpes. And they go, we're all set. <laughs> right. Well, but, who knows? But what can you do? So I went on there, and I literally did three-hour show, and it's intense, as you know. Of he's course. really staring at you, and he's big. He's got the neck, the tattoos. No and, doubt about it. Uh, I'm gay, and 
So, oh, the cat is on the move. All right. Terrific. All right. Well, anyways. So, yeah. So I went and did the show. He talked for two hours and 50 minutes, and it was the day of the Tony Hinchcliffe stuff. Yes. So I was nervous about that. We never even talked about it. I called Sarah, and I'm like, hey, it was great. And I'm like, it was fun. I had a good time. And we didn't even talk about anything controversial. So no worries about uh, that. <laughs> and then three days later, I'm on the flight home, and I, I get six texts. You're on BBC. You're on CNN. You're on To Catch a Predator. You're oh, on my God. Roger Ebert. I, it was wild. The thing blew up because he said white people are going to die or whatever. Or are silenced. Yeah, we're getting silenced. So, violence. I mean, this thing exploded. Don Lemon was talking about it. What? And you see Don Lemon being like, I don't like this one bit. And it cuts to me. With a crooked teeth and a cigar oh, going, I know it's crazy, man. I mean, it, it's terrifying. So, uh, were you talking on the on the show, or is just your your wacky mug? It's just my wacky mug, and I'm going. I know it's crazy. Wow, weird. I think I just did a lot of those, and then the yeah. clip that went viral. It ends with me being like, "Yeah, but oh," and then it cuts off. Isn't that funny? They don't they don't want you to to rebuttal. Well, they don't know who I am. I'm like I'm That's useless. True. They're like this is some nobody, but they want Ro- I think they want him bad because he made a hundred million and he's whatever he's got muscles or whatever it is yeah he's a bald scary rich honky so they want him dead but uh i got caught up in the middle of it and it was terrifying wow. i've had now two controversial rogan episodes without That's anyone true. watching it yeah. <laughs> but it's times like that where you go thank god i'm i'm not famous thank right. god i'm a nobody thank god people see my wacky uh facade and move on right well some guy wrote to me and was like way to Push back on Rogan, you fucking pussy. And I genuinely am not sure which side he's on. Yeah. Like, if he was mad at me for pushing back, because I was, like, I was kind of laughing and, like, yeah, but... So I don't know if he was mad at that or if he was, like, on the other side and he was, like, yeah, he didn't even push back, you fucking bitch. Right. I, I generally don't know what he was talking about, but... That was the only person that was upset with me, as far as I could tell. But all right, all right, well, it was not so I, bad. I'm like the Forrest Gump of podcasts. I'm just adjacent to history. Yes, like that's he's good. Gabby Hoffman or whoever, and uh, I'm Forrest going in in Vietnam or yeah. whatever, and the the sound gets pulled out when I talk. Right, and you're just lucky you didn't get AIDS. So uh, how yeah. did he not get AIDS, by the way? Huh? How did he not get AIDS? I know. I was wondering that too. I, maybe she got it later in life. No, because she was all straight and fly right. But I think it is harder for a man because he's not getting, like, pumped. I think you got to have some blood. Cooking. Yeah, I think it is tougher for a heterosexual man to... It, even if you fuck a lady with AIDS, mm. it's difficult to transmit that way. Woo! Thank so. God, the patriarchy. Yep. Uh, well, yeah, there you go. So I saw your 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 kooky, uh, your kooky face there on, on the TMZ, and I couldn't believe it. And, and it's funny, I mentioned this before, but... All we wanted to do when we start out, I got to get on TV, I got to get on every channel, I got to have exposure, and now when you're on every channel, you're going, this is bad news, my life's over, I'm canceled, I'm ruined. Well, it's a weird thing about show business, because you, you, like you're saying, you want to be seen, but now I'm like, I don't want to be on any TV, I just want to have a quiet podcast, a nice, quiet, yeah. normal life, and do my sets at the Funny Jizz. Yep. Because someone had a good point, they were like, you people in showbiz, he was a non-showbiz guy. He said, you're in showbiz, everything you do your whole life is building to get famous. Then you get famous and wear sunglasses around so nobody recognizes you. Yeah, Isn't that interesting? That's fascinating. You want the perks, though. You want to get into the restaurant and go, hey, I'm uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, and they go, ooh, this guy likes to eat. So they bring in, but then you don't want to get bothered at the airport with a hangover. Yeah, well, you, yeah, you want everyone to go, you're amazing, we love you, you're brilliant. But you don't want people to go, hey, we heard you say queef on yeah. TV, you piece of shit. I know. No, I know. I don't think it's worth it. I, I would never want to be a seinfeld level, even a Rogan level. I'm like, it's too much. Yeah, it's tough. The it's down scary. is worse than the up. Well, there's ups and downs and overs and outs. You don't have to worry about finance. That's pretty nice. That is nice, but you can do that by inventing uh, Adidas or something. True. All mm. day I dream about sex. Huh? That's what Adidas stands for. Remember? Do you ever have that? Oh, I never put that together. When we were kids, you'd do all day, I dream about sex, and then you could reverse. Sex all day is definitely awesome. What? Yeah, that was big over there. That was big. I won't do iRock, but uh, that was huge. That never made it to New Orleans. We, we couldn't read down there. That's pretty impressive. We had a Pontiac. I won't do that one on the air. Yeah, Pontiac and iRock were bad news bears, but... Uh, I don't know iRock. That was in a car, the IROC Z. I know the car, but I don't know the uh, the, the letters there. Yeah, we'll put it on the Patreon. Now we're talking. You got to sign up. 
Uh, for the dirty stuff. <laughs> get in there. The patriarchy patron. But anyways, so I that rock. was exciting. I got some I other rock. Texas stuff. What? Oh, I can't. I'm trying to put I rock together. Well, I'll shoot you a text. Uh, is it I-R-O-K? C. C. Yeah. Now I got it. Well, anyways, so what are you doing? Let's do a little back. Right. I got to get my thoughts together, my asshole together, because sure, just talking sure. about Rogan makes me anxious. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I mentioned the Salisbury, so we got out of that. Uh, so... Just to really make my life even harder, I go to Salisbury, I come back on a bus, I get no sleep, yada, yada, yada. Next day, fly to Houston. Mm. Now, this is not a Houston gig. This is a gig in Bryan, Texas. Bryan? Like B-R-I-A-N? Like Brian uh, Herf Hoffman or Brian Griffin? Setzer Orchestra. Yeah, Brian Griffin. Couldn't think of a Brian. So, Regan. Thank you. So uh, I'm like, all right, go and just suck it back up. Four-hour flight to Houston, land in Houston, jump in Andrew Youngblood's car. He picks me up at the airport. You know, you're woozy. Uh, you got the, the flight grease on you. Jump in a car, drive two hours to Bryan, which is a small college town. That's where A&M is. What? I thought that was in College Station. Same thing. Oh, that's Brian is college. It's one of these towns that like that college station is Brian and yeah, Brian exactly. is, you know, whatever. I think the guy Brian uh, founded it. And they go, this is college station. He goes, what about me? And they go, all right, we'll call it Brian, you chooch. Quit, I hate those bitching. towns. It's, it's the county is this, but yeah. the town is that. I'm like, well, where the fuck am I? Isn't that weird about Brooklyn? It's Kings County. But then there's Queen. So why, it, wouldn't it be better to have King and Queen? Yeah, but it is King County and Queens County. I know, but how come Queens County got to stay Queens? I don't know what goes on there. And then there's like drag queen. Uh, there's some other stuff too. Like you're in a some of these towns. You're at like the Omaha Funny Bone, but it's in a village called Yes, you know, Liberty, Ohio. Liberty, yeah. It's all this weird shit. I don't know what's what. But anyways, yeah. Anyway, so you know, I'm I'm on Brian. I get to Brian. You're on fumes, and I gotta say, I gotta give a shout out to these Brian queefs. These kids. This is just like a random guy who who has a bar. He runs a bar, whatever. He's like a young kid, and he's obsessed with comedy. And you get nervous about these because everybody wants to be Joe Hollywood and put on a big show with a microphone and a green room and a, and sell it out and say we got you on the poster and all this shit. So uh, a little, a lot of them get a little uh, highfalutin, and sure. the show stinks. Mm -hmm. They just want the glitz and the glamour, and they, hey, look what I did, everybody. I brought this guy here, and how cool am I? Now please blow me. This kid said, what do you want in the green room? We've sold out. We promoted the balls out of it. It's going to be a hot show. Uh, I got you staying at this great hotel, blah, 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 and it was amazing. Wow. That's not... What kind of... So it, it, it's the college town. So yeah. is there a bunch of college kids? or it's is all it kids. Tuesdays? Do they know who you are? They don't know who you are? What's going on? It was one of these towns where it's got a main street and the little shops. They got the old theater. It looked like the town in Back to the Future. Ah, uh, Hill Valley. Thank you. Yeah. Goldie the mayor. Mayor Goldie Wilson. Thank you. All right, so uh, the clock tower, 88 gigawatts. So uh, just beautiful, cute town. It, it feels like one of those towns that's run by kids. You're like, where are the adults? Oh, I love that. I love it, too. Every, it's like, you know, boys and girls. It's like the Lost Boys. And uh, it's just party, restaurants, bars, good times. So the show fills up. Tuesdays are out there. Sold a ton of shirts. I'm in the green room. Great time, sold out all the shows, and uh, this kid couldn't have been more accommodating, and I got to give a shout out to him, so uh, now I can't think of his name, but great kid. Is it Brian? I wish. Damn. That would have been easier, but sweet kid, and uh, we did a couple of shows, we got super drunk, and it was fun because I'm the only guy in the town. They all know each other. Hey, hey, it's Bob at the Cobbler, and Jimmy with the Pie Shop, and uh, old whore Betty, you know, they all know each other. So then I show up. I'm the guy who's been on the poster for six months. They go, that's the guy. I got more shots bought me than, uh, you know, fucking Jose Canseco. It's so fun being the guy. It was the I was the guy, yeah. Bob Cobb. But here's the kooky part. Now, this is what you got to love about the road. Because everybody, you know, you start getting a little bigger in the biz. You know, you're at your level. You're doing Rogan. You're doing the Paramount Theater. These little gigs, they have... It's a sense of adventure. You know, you jump in a car, and look, we're tired, I'm hungover, I'm gay. But you get into a car, and we drive from Houston to Bryan. I go, man, I'm starving. Andrew Youngblood goes, yeah, me too. You know what we should do? We should go get some barbecue in Texas, but we'll find the most fucked up, hole-in-the-wall barbecue joint in the middle of these two 
towns. There's nothing there. I love that. I love those places in Texas. That's the funnest part about driving in Texas because you're on all these service roads or be whatever the fuck they call yes. them, weird roads. Yes. And uh, it's weird when they're on those roads that are like flat, yes. like you're just next to the grass. Like, right. Up here, it's all lifted up or whatever, <laughs> whatever you call it. But anyways, yeah, you're there. And you, you. you just see the smoker, the big black. Right. Thing. It looks like an oil tank, and you just smell it from a mile away. You see the rusty smoker and the Confederate flags, yes. and you just come pulling in, and the dirt goes flying behind you. Completely. Yeah, there's that old uh, the cow skull, you know. Yeah, the, you got to have it. Weed. Yeah, the cacti. I love Texas. I want to just I do too. fuck Texas right in the ass. I'm not moving there. I'm not driving <laughs> them to the airport. <laughs> But it's a great place. I love the weather, and uh, you know some of the people are a little frightening. But sure, uh, there's plenty of assholes out here. By the uh, way, you got that right, sloppy jalopy. Good I, point. I used to always say that with L.A. Like, oh, people are so L.A. They're L.A. This, they're L.A. That. I'm like, well, we got some pretty first class fucking queefs out here Yo, in New York too. I big might add. cum guzzlers out here. And you, you know, you drive around in the. Wherever I'm not going to name neighborhood, but you drive around, you're like, well, this isn't so hot either. Yo, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's it's like your point with Bean Town. You know, oh, Boston's so racist. I'm like, ah, I can hear a pretty good N word uh, upstate New York. I'll tell you that. Exactly. I always say, I'm like, point to the part of the country that doesn't have a racial history. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't People know, like Canada? Boston. This. I'm like, I know we had a riot. We had a busing situation. There's a couple of Wahlbergs beat up the guy. Now the Asian kid blinded him. Yeah. But I mean, Detroit's got some history. Ooh. The Pacific Northwest has got 11 black people total. Right. Southern California, the riots, the whole thing. The so Mexicanes, all that stuff ain't pretty either. But it's uh, you know a lot of history here. I uh, I die. I digress. So we find the place. I mean, this is the the little chimney with the curl of smoke, a wood shack with the metal roof I can smell it yes you pull in ding 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 and I mean they got the license plates on the wall there's George Bush you know with the signed photo of the, the owner shaking hands with George Bush Sr. by the way oh god here that's comes the better the, Bush the puss yeah great Bush um, <laughs> still a bad Bush but a better Bush <laughs> I like it shaved but either way ah, try to get your big noggin in that cup I didn't think so Dickless. what'll happen though he'll knock it over I think yeah he, the cats can problem solve he's a knocker oh but Back to the well, eh? Yep. What a piece of shit. Absorbing. Mm-mm-mm. I think okay. it's absorbing. So, uh, no absorb. But just the best barbecue. And it was one of these places where I was like, I don't know what I want. And the guy, he's always like, I hate this guy. He's gay. You know, he's got a big cowboy hat on. He's got spurs and a, and a belt buckle, you know, tucked in sh- plaid shirt, tight jeans. And he owns the place, and all his daughters are working there. All these oh fat, fat uh, greasy ladies are just like doing the register, and you see them stirring a big pot of beans in the back, got an eye patch and a limp. Are they cute? They feel cute no. in my mind. Oh, because no. I was picturing cute. Oh, no. It's all a bunch of Delta Burke uh. cunts and uh, Rosie O'Donnell's uh. back there. Yikes. Yeah, seat section scar and a lot of, uh, a lot of finger licking and stuff like that. So, either way. Great barbecue, and I couldn't pick the guy who goes, I'm going to give you a little everything. I'm going to give you, and he was so aggressive. I was like, okay, sir, and then I blew him, and then the food was great. He gave us an extra rib. Everything was amazing. Then we packed up, morale is high, and drove to Brian. Can I just say, I, I know I'm an asshole, I'm a cunt, everybody hates me, I'm the worst part of the, your life, but I hate these guys. I, I'll decide what you'll eat. Don't worry about it. Like I'm like, it can I just choose my food? <laughs> I know. I hate these people. You need to have this. You got to have that. But I don't like that. I know, but you haven't had it here. And I'm, I'm like, all right, you. fine. But I don't like pickles, so don't give me the pickle. I'm so with you. I, yeah, but it, he gave me a little everything, and I, I'm not too choosy with the foodie, so I went for it. And it was all great, and the guy was super nice. I wish I could remember the name of the place. But hot time, summer in the city. So here's my Brian story. First night, Brian, gangbusters. We must have hit every bar in town. We just get, did a bunch of shots, headlocks, noogies, punched a guy in the face, grabbed a clit, got out of there. Then we go to this one bar called 101. Ooh. We show up. We got a big group now. We got the producer, the opener, the couple audience members, a couple local comics, and it's we're drunk. We're playing cornhole. We're dancing to the music, and... Uh, we're drinking, and this one guy gets a little little rowdy. Oh, boy. And, and you're a group or a different group? Different group. Uh-huh. And these are big Texas folk out there, you know? So if a guy's getting rowdy, it's kind of bull China shop s- s- situation here. Not to mention there's open carry out there, isn't there? I think they got guns. Oh, uh, maybe. Maybe. This is a little hippy-dippy so. college town. So I don't know. I don't know. But either way, 
the bartender, she's tough. She's like a cowgirl, you know, cornbread eating cum guzzler lady, you know. So she's not taking a shit. She's like, hey, 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 hey get, get off the table. Get your feet off the table, whatever it is. And he's like, ah, blow me. And then these guys, they you can't talk about a lady down there. It's old school. Oh, right. So the they, lady guys. I know those guys. They start pushing him around, the bouncer guy. And then he starts pushing the bouncer. And they're both big guys. So this is like, oh, this is an even fight here. What's going to happen? Now the whole bar gets behind the bouncer and they pick this guy up and throw him out. Oh, wow. It like, was amazing. Like Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, it was like a, like a, the whole town came together and they're all on the right, good side and this is the bad guy and we got to stop it and we, we don't call the cops. We do it ourselves. Wow, that's it was, fun. It was like community. It was fun to see. There was no tweeting and uh, let me cancel this guy. I was like, hey, fuck this guy. Whoop. And that was it. Wow, that's old school. It was old school, and it was fun to watch. And I, I heard the guy went back the next day and apologized. He's like, yeah, it, it's just small town thinking, and it was it was fun to see because you don't see that anymore. We got to take everything public now. You called me a, a Jew, so now I got to talk about it on The View, and then you get yelled at, you know. I spew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you eat my goo. But that sounds fun, and it feels like the kind of place where he's back there, like you said, the next day, and he's like, I had a weird night, and they're like, eh, if the boys want to fight, you better let them. You know, right. like that kind of uh, exactly. boys are back in town kind of scene. That sounds great. It was fun. Great. He had a black eye. And that was the only thing black in the town, but it was just a fun, fun visual. I got to just sit back. I got my tequila like, whoa, look at this. Holy shit. I mean, I didn't help anybody, but uh, great time. And then here's the, the, the list, the list of mania right here. So now we got a quandary. I got a 10 a.m. flight out of, out of uh, Houston the next day. I could have flown out of College Station, but it's 17 connections and, right. you know, the whole thing. Eight million dollars more money. So I go, I got a 10 a.m. flight out of Houston, and so Andrew, the opener, says, well, you could just sleep at my house, or we could just sleep here and drive in the morning. But we have to leave at 5, Oof. you know, because it's a two-hour drive. Then you get there at 7. Then you got to get to the Houston airport an hour early, whatever it was. So sure. I said, well, let's just go back that night. Yeah, why not? Well, that, you know, that's hard for some people because it's late. Yeah, uh, had a couple cocktails. Had a couple cocktails, and you did two shows, and you sold merch, and you took photos. So some people were like, "I gotta, I gotta hit the hay." I'm sorry, and he's it's his car, so he'd probably do all the driving. Right, it's hard because it's the thing we talked about. It's just your problem. Yes, nobody else gives a yes, shit. It's exactly. like the old parking in the city thing. They're like, "It's fine, don't worry about it. You're right. good, don't worry," because you know they don't have to pay the ticket. They don't have to get up. What do they give a fuck? That's why I feel even worse because it's all my, it's my shit that he's got to help me with, and I know he's the opener, and that's part of the deal. But I don't really, I don't love that. I don't, I don't feel good about that. That's why you got to pay for the meals and the gas and all that just to kind of smooth it over. But yeah, so we drove back that night. We get to Houston. And uh, it's probably like 1 in the morning now, 2 in the morning. Not bad. Not bad. Flights at 10, get there at 9, wake up at 8. So, you know, we got a couple hours. And then, I don't know what came over us. We're like, man, we did all those shows we never ate. Oh, boy. And I'm like, well, I, I can just suck it up. I'll eat in the morning, whatever. And he was like, ah, I'd like to eat. And I was like, I would like to eat, but what, what are we going to do? It's 2 in the morning in Houston. And there it is in the distance. The glow. Taco Bell. Oh, uh, God. Oh. Taco Bell. I'm not proud of it. Oh, my God. You're in Texas eating Taco uh, Bell? Well, nothing's open. Oh, boy. So we go to Taco Bell. And now you start thinking about all those high school, the Bell Beefer, the Bell Grande, the, the Chip Chalupa. Oh, boy. And you get a little mouthwatery. So then we go to Taco Bell. The line is out the ass. It's 18 cars deep. Right. The one place open. Exactly. Classic. I've had that in the road so many times. Yes. You're like, I'm going to go to McDonald's. I don't like to eat McDonald's, but fuck it. I'll stuff a like, double quarter pounder up my ass. And you go over there. There's 48 cars. And then you go, fuck it. We'll eat at 7-Eleven. Get some peanuts. Right. Right. We should have done that because once you get in line, I'm going, eh, maybe it's a bad idea. The clock's ticking. Everybody, There's that one coos up there. I said no sour cream, you piece of shit. Fucking queef whatever so that's a problem and it finally starts going now you got a guy behind you so now you really can't leave you're kind of committed the whole thing took about 50 minutes oh i'm <laughs> eating know. over here then you got to go to the house and eat right that's another half hour then you got to try to fall asleep and you think about your childhood and you cry and then you finally get an hour of sleep you get on the plane oh, that's the brutal the, the the no sleep flying uh, is brutal uh, I, I just can't stand it and sleep is so 
Crucial. It's why I'm Crucial. shoving Tylenol PMs and Benadryl at my ass every 10 minutes because same. you want to sleep. I want to sleep, but you just have that thing. And I, I had the same thing when I was leaving Austin. I, I'm Tarantinoing it backwards, but when you're leaving Austin, the same thing, 7 a.m. flight because you want to get out of there and you have a 5 a.m. pickup. Yes. And I can't go to bed at 9 of p.m. Course. What am I, an asshole? So of I'm course. up till 1 and then you, that alarm goes off and you know it's bad because you have that wake up that's like, <gasps> yeah. like, like, like crazy. <laughs> yeah, the knob you, You're just like, ah, and like I'm literally shaking and are we just fucking ripping the craziest farts all night? Because if I wake up earlier than normal. Huh. My farts are just like. That's true. <laughs> You got like crazy cartoon farts, and it makes me think if I set an alarm or whatever at five in the morning, or if someone filmed me sleeping, am I just shitting my pants from like four to seven? Yeah. Because when I wake <laughs> I up, know. I'm just firing out like the wildest, like wily coyote farts. I wonder what that is. You're I don't know. It's you, it's wacky. Yeah, when you get less sleep, you're really, really passing some air biscuits. I mean, I got like Andre the Giant, like. <laughs> You're like, woke the cat. Oh, it's not the first fart that has fucked the cat up. That's but, true. You no, know, I, I had the same thing where you're just, and then the next day you're just all off and you feel, there's all those studies like lack of sleep is like drunk. It's the equivalent it's of, of driving and you're like startled. You're sh- I look like fucking the dumb cat here. No I offense. know. Well, yeah, he's hammered. He's the sleeping, vodka. drinking water out of a bowl and uh, yeah. stretching and falling he's asleep. Mess. He's a mess. He hates Palestine, but it's a whole thing. But yeah, you're right. The the farting with the, with the, uh, with the waking up early. Wait, you got one? What? Oh, I thought you were going to fart. No, I was checking the uh, the ad situation in, but in the also, stores. But also, when you you talk about drinking all night and then waking up early, Taco Bell and then no sleep, you are waking up like, ooh, oh, oh, boy. Yeah. And that ain't for that sun hits you and you got the meat sweats and the, you're breathing out that fire sauce. Yuckaroo. Well, I think I'm still triggered from the drinking days all those days. Like, flying hungover, no sleep is the worst activity oh. that I've experienced in my life. And every, it's just the worst. Everybody in the night, you'll sleep on the plane. What are you kidding me? I'm sitting up like this, my head's throbbing, I'm puking in my own mouth, and I'm shitting blood. No, I've never slept on a plane ever once in my whole life. But hey, I'll tell you what I have done, folks. I have used Manscaped. <laughs> Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Manscaped. Man, they keep sending us a ton of great stuff. Oh, yeah. Wake the kids and call the neighbors. This is a public service announcement, folks. It is finally here. I think it's right over there. The Lawnmower 4.0. This is the best below-the-belt trimming system in the world. That's right, folks. Never been one better. The Lawnmower 4.0. They should shave the cat with that goddamn thing. Oh, yeah. The Lawnmower 4.0 has the same advanced ceramic blade and skin safety technology you've come to expect from Manscaped. Plus, the 4.0 lets you set the length of your trim, adjust the guard size from one all the way up to four. Shape it up. It's even got a spotlight with an on-off switch, which is Ooh. great, by the way. It comes in handy at night. I keep it right by my bed. You got that right. 4,000K LED lights. So you can see what you're doing, if you know what I mean. With the new travel lock, you can take your show on the road. I mean, this thing is badass. I'm so grateful they sent it to us. Same. Really appreciate it. I would happily buy one. I'll buy one as a gift for a few people come the holiday season, birthdays, Father's Day, all that stuff. You got that right. This thing kicks ass. It's got the crop shaver, the crop exfoliator, the crop gel. It's got everything. You name a crop, it's got it. Yes, sir, crop. Shaver. Introducing the crop shaver. This is not your average shaver, smaller and thicker. Sounds like me. With a micro combo bar and three position blades, you can get a close shave. I've said enough. Tell them how to get it, Mark. You got that right. Big fan of the Manscaped. Now get 20% off and free worldwide shipping by going to manscaped.com and using promo code TUESDAYS. That's 20% off and free worldwide shipping by going to manscaped.com. Promo code Tuesdays. Manscaped. Use the right tools for the job, folks. That's right, folks. Tuesdays with Stories also brought to you. Once you're all shaved up, you might want to get yourself a Blue Chew. Ooh, you got that right. You all know about Blue Chew. You know what it's like to have sex on a Blue Chew. This is going to be the best sex you've ever had in your life. You pop a Blue Chew. A few minutes later, you're ready to rock, and it feels like you add growth and girth. It's really something nice. You can get more confidence in the bedroom by using Blue Chew tablets, which offer the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form. If you don't like swallowing pills, this is for you. It works fast. You can take it day or night, and you'll save a ton of money. 
compared to the name brands. Blue Chew is an online prescription service that means no doctor's office or waiting in line. Mark, I know you've used it. Tell them how you like it. Tell them how to get it. Do whatever you do. Big fan. I always say you keep one right in the old mini pocket just for an emergency, and uh, it's never failed. It tastes good. It goes down easy. Big fan. Special offer just for the gays. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code TUESDAYS. Just pay $5 in shipping. Come on, folks. You can't beat that. Just get get something for fun. Put it in your dad's water. See what happens. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com. Promo code Tuesdays to try it for free. <laughs> that's right, folks. Tuesdays with Stories. This is the last but not least. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Keeps. That's right. Everyone knows what it's like. You're all we're all worried about losing our hair, us men especially. And, oh uh, yeah. Oof. Yeah, I know. It's scary times. It's uh, scary. No one wants to be bald. You look like a goofball. It's embarrassing. <laughs> and uh, so I'm terrified all the time. And by the way, my hairline started this high. People all the time tell me I'm balding. It, uh, my hair hasn't moved an inch. I got a giant forehead. I want to kill myself. That's a but nice head of hair. We've got some terrifying stats for you. Gee whiz. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. Ah! Gee whiz. That's right. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Oh, boy. And there are only two FDA-approved drugs out there to prevent hair loss. But there's good news. Keeps has both of them. You can keep your hair with Keeps, a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Get convenient virtual doctor consultants and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't even have to leave your house. You're not going to want to if you're going bald. Mm. If it's low-cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month. Everything comes in a discreet package. No wonder Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Wow. Tell them how, Mark. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Tuesdays to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tuesdays to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Tuesdays and keep your hair. And remember, folks, you got to get in it before it goes. That's the key. You want to keep it because it ain't coming back just like your ex. That's right. No, she ain't. No, sirree, Bob. All right, I feel like I hogged it with all that, Brian. But I do want to say the guy's name is Alex. Great head of hair, cool outfit. He uh, put on a hell of a show. So I would recommend you going down. If you're ever in Houston, pop over to Brian. Make a whole week out of it. Well, maybe I'll set up a football game in the fall. I always want to go over there, College Station, A&M, the 12th man. My asshole bleeds when I shit. That's the other thing. You got me into college. You took me to Georgetown once and they ate me out. And so I took Andrew and we went to A&M. Beautiful campus. We rented scooters. We ran all over the town, all over the college. I love a camp. We sat and watched a, uh, a track meet. Oh, that's so fun. I'm all Great about time. camping. I, all the shirts I wear are all campus. I got Iowa State. I got Iowa up my ass. I got uh, U, U of W and UCLA and the other one. Yeah, yeah. Go Aggies or Anals or whatever the hell it is. But, uh, yeah, good times. Love, love a campus. A, love a campus. Love college. Love uh, young women, childbearing hips. And, yes. Uh, Yoga pants. Anyways, I, I don't know what to go with here. I got a few things, but I want to just touch on this one thing because I was so excited. And I don't know if this is a story or what. But Please. So I had a comedy seller spot. We're, we're starting to come back, as you know, as you've seen. I mean, I don't know about where you're coming in from, but New York City is 60% vaccinated or whatever. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I got my vaccine. Game over. I still wear the mask. Well, they want me to wear the mask because I yeah. care about rules and society. But <laughs> sure, I, I, I've been making out with homeless uh, <laughs> men on, on the streets. Oh, yeah. I'm pumped. I mean, it, it's, it's as good as over to me as far as I'm concerned. So Same here. The Comedy Cellar. I had a spot Monday night, and I'm walking up, and it's a late night, and I'm leaving the next day for Austin, and I'm nervous because uh, you got Rogan and the thing. I was gone for a week, the whole thing. So I get to the cellar, and it's a quiet Monday night. I'm walking in, and I just hear some music, and the band is back. Gnome oh. is playing with some guy named uh, Nick Cassavetes, or some kind of Greekish, mm. Italian name. And then there's a third guy. But in the old days, on the weekends, the band would play. And the Village Underground used to be a music club where Gnome and his band. And these are like world-class musicians. Oh, yeah. I come in. I'm early for my spot. They're like, we're running behind. And it's quiet. There's only a few people there. 
I grab a booth, put my feet up, and I tell the host, Eric Newman, I said, I'll be right here when you need me. And Ooh. I really just took some music in. First live it. music I've seen in over a year. And I, I go to a lot of shows, a lot of concerts. White Reaper coming up. You should come to White oh, Reaper. I'm down for some Reap. I'll have some fun. John Reap. Ari and his girl are out of town because he's an asshole. So uh, yeah. maybe you come in. Yeah, you reap what you sow. But anyways, so I sat there and watched, and I almost started crying. I had my feet up, and everyone's clapping along, and they're taking requests, and he's got the mandolin out, and maybe want to dust off the mandolin, which I was playing six months ago. I used to take lessons. I stopped taking lessons because I'm gay, and I can't follow through with anything because I'm a piece of shit, and I got a small dick. I'm but doing the same. I, I got to get better as well. My God, I mean, like, just to watch... Real world class musicians, no mask, in a nightclub. It felt like it could have been any decade, and they were wailing and no one was smiling and laughing. Uh, the guys laugh. You know when musicians look at each other. Yes, you know what I yes, mean? Yes, I love the a comic. A comic never gets to look at another guy. No I guess with a podcast, you look whatever. <laughs> I don't like the eye contact. It's no good. We never look. But don't look. I'm staring over here. The cat scares me. Anyways, yep. I got to keep an eye on him. But I got a window. But they keep looking and they're laughing. And you're like, why are they laughing? Who even knows? And I'm I'm tapping my toe. And I didn't even want to go on. They're like, you're up. And I'm like, I'm watching them play Stevie Wonder. And they oh, kicked ass. They're good. They're really good. It just felt, I wanted to just throw my ankles over my heads and blew myself until yes. I shit my pants. And and then I, I was like, I, I got to go back to playing Mandolin, which I, of course I haven't done since then. But whatever. I'm never going to be that good. And then I had to yeah. have this moment of like, why are you beating yourself up? Just enjoy uh -huh. that he's good. Who Where, cares? Where's the joy, fatty? I'm this other guy. So I joy. And I sent him an email. And I was like, that was the best night of my life. I had to like edit it because I was like, too much blowing them. I'm like, you're the best person I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I can't believe you have a comedy club. I want to eat your ass out with a fucking nickel. <laughs> That's lunch. That doesn't even make sense. So I sent him an email. I was like, you're world class. And that was great. And he's like, this is the nicest email I've ever got. Maybe feel good. Wow. Dopamine. All kinds of dopamine shooting out of my asshole. But man, it was special to just watch. You forget the little things with yes. all this COVID shit. And to just watch musicians play in the village. Here, here. What a night. It was magical. The next day I flew to Austin and that was fun. I was there for six days, did Rogan, got accosted, told that story already. And then I had Sarah couldn't come because she was in Royerford with Adrian, but all her siblings live in Austin, and her mother came up to visit. Ah, that's a bummer. So I said, hey, I'll be a good husband. I'm going to go hang out with the in-laws. Wow, you're a... They're a nice man. Well, they're good people. They're fun. They're nice people, and they're a good time. So her sister, she set up a trip to Barton Springs, which Ooh, never been to Barton Springs. What? I've spent like two months of my life in Austin, and for some reason, this is where I'm such an idiot, Barton Springs just sounds far away. Doesn't it sound far? Barton's, uh, yeah, Barton Springs. Fink, maybe, but spring, ah, I don't know. It doesn't sound far. How, how can something sound far? Hey, I feel like you can meet me halfway here. I mean, it's a city. Right. It's a city. Springs. You're in a, you're in a metropolitan see. area. There's a big Capitol building. There's skyscrapers. And so when someone says springs, you don't think it's down the street. I mean, you got to admit. That's true. That's, a a no, natural right. spring in a downtown metropolis right. we is got pretty cement right here. strange. Yeah. yeah. That's why you guys go, hey, I'm going hiking. I go, that's going to be a 30-minute car ride plus a hoof in it. Then you got the sweat and then the Jews. I, I just can't do it. So <laughs> I get it now with the springs. So my whole life, they kept saying, I appreciate you. That was nice of you well, to kind of move. I've been to the spring so I know how not far it is so then I had to regroup to a non-knower but you see what I mean with the sounds I get the sounds Barton Springs I mean <laughs> there's no springs in Manhattan no there's there's, there's uh, Poland Springs yeah you gotta buy it's like six bucks a whack now by ah, the way they uh, kill you on the raping but the hot dog guy I think because they're European or African or wherever they're from you can still do the walk away with them. The walk away. I'm like, can I get a bottle of water? He's like, it's four bucks, my friend. And I'm like, ah, never mind. He's like, yes. two bucks. What do you got? And I'm yeah, like, I appreciate yeah. it. I love the walk away. Because CVS, you can't do the walk away. Right. The problem with the gays, though, I do the walk away. They keep coming. <laughs> what? The gays want to fuck you? In the yeah. I, get, I walk by gay, eight gay bars to get home. I got to tap dance and jump over cocks. And one guy goes, come on, buddy. I go, I'm good. I'm good. He goes, woo, playing hard to get. I go, no, I'm not playing the walk away. So I just end up blowing them. Walk a gay, but so, but CVS if they go, it's eight bucks for a water. You can't uh, say blow me. You gotta. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So Barton Springs, it always sounded far away. I never went. I didn't realize it was down the street. Now you're gonna make a reservation because of COVID. So she says, "We'll pick you up, mom and I." And uh, so her mother comes up and. They pick me up at the uh, the hotel. I get myself a tea and a book, and we go over there. And I'd never been, 
We brought blankets. She brought snacks. The whole thing. We sat by the water. I swam in the natural pool. It's cold water or yeah. chilly water, which is so funny because I've probably talked about this before, but I'm from New England. So all these Texas people, the Southern people, no offense, they're like, careful, the water's cold. Yeah. I don't go in. It's so freezing. And I get in. I'm like, this is delightful because I've been swimming. <laughs> I'm from Maine. I've been swimming in ocean water that's 48 degrees in the summer. I'm with you. I don't like the cold water. I'll do it, but I'm not into it. So I, I, I love it. It doesn't bother me at all. So I go in. I'm swimming. And it, it's spiritual. It's a natural pool. Yes. There's like the film and algae on the bottom and just a perfect day. And the women, it's, which is weird because you're with your sister-in-law and your mother-in-law. And you're trying to be a good boy. I'm like, well, I love my wife. And then there's like these women walking by, and I'm like, well, I'm going to go take a walk. I'll yeah. be right back. I'm going to go <laughs> meditate or yeah. whatever, but I'm, I'm beating off in the bushes. But, yeah, uh, you got a natural spring coming out. <laughs> exactly. But great hang with the mother in law. Unless wow. you feel like a good boy, you're I've, getting points. I've and, never heard that sentence. And a great conversation. And then, of course, her sister's so good because she knows what I like. She's a good host. Yes. So she goes, and then. We're going to Magnolia. I know you love Magnolia, so I mean, I just stick a high heel in my ass and come in my own face. I love Magnolia, so I, I go over to Magnolia Cafe, and we have a great lunch. They have the best queso I've ever had in my life. I'm, Hell of a queso. I'm, I'm throwing that on my balls, and just a great day, and then this is the best. So we're going to have a family dinner, Uh oh. and you know how it goes when... You're still not done with the fam. I feel like you did your part. Well, here. so here's the thing. This is a lot of fam. So then her sister, I just, I, I just adore her. I love her. I'm so grateful. She's like, all right, well, we'll drop you off at the hotel. I'm going to go back and rest and nap, and then we'll pick you back up for oh. dinner. So I'm like, yes, that's what I need. How did you know? Oh. Unbelievable. What is this broad? She, she sounds like a keeper. She, you married the wrong cooch. She, she drops me off, and I'm like, God almighty, I'm like, you feel so good because yes. I'm having a great time. It's not stressful, but you're like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's a 12-hour oh. hang. So I go home, I nap, I rest, I relax, I shower, I go to the pool, I get the pool oh, to myself, you the recharge. gym. Totally recharge. They pick me back up, and I'm like, I'll take an Uber. She's like, what are you kidding? You're a guest. She picks me up. Oh. We go to Torchy's Tacos because uh, the niece works the Torchy's. Oh, you got the niece hookup. The niece hook. Well, there was no hookup, but she came over. Come the on, whole family's there, and that was exciting. And the, and the brother's a big Rogan fan, so that was exciting. Oh, there we go. Which is always a little nerve-wracking. Because on Rogan, I'm like, yeah, I'm here. My wife's here. I'm going to fuck all her brothers in the ass. And I think that's funny. <laughs> he doesn't get the joke. And then they listen to it, and they're like, what's going on I here? one of the same thing. But anyway, so went out to dinner. That felt great. Great hang there. And then they're like, we're going for a big walk. We walk around the river Saturday mornings. And I go, I'll come for the walk. Uh -huh. They pick me up again. We go for the walk. And it feels so nice to like belong with a family that's not your family. Uh, it feels well, so touching. Our family stinks, too. It's nice to have a normal family there. Exactly. And then they'll be like, our family's kooky, huh? And I'm like, uh, you don't even know the half of it. I'm like, I'll, I'll do anything to be part of this family. Yes. It's great. Don't get me started. You haven't diddled me yet. This is already an upgrade. <laughs> so great family bonding. Just a great time. And I'm sorry. Some of my stories sometimes are just gratitude. That was but beautiful. It was delightful. A lot of laughs. And they're funny people. So you're yeah. having a good laugh. And I love that break, though. Like, oh, we'll drop you off. I'm like, God, I want to blow you. We're introverts. We need to, to be alone for a two minutes just to get it cooking again. And uh, it's kind of like a boner. You bang your gal, and then she's like, oh, that was great. You want to go again? I'm like, you've got to give me a, a halfy here or a blue chew. <laughs> That's a hell of a problem to have. Uh, I'm, a, I'm 24 hour minimum between sex. Oh, okay. My wife's never been like, you want to fuck again? That's ridiculous. Oh, really? No, I think she gets a UTI, whatever that school is in Bryan. Yeah, 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 I hear you. But uh, uh, I think it's the Aggies. But either way, uh, you need a minute to come back to life and get it going again. And isn't it fascinating that there's people out there who can do the 9 p.m.? They'd be like, break? What are you talking about? Why do you need a break? Well, that's my family. This is the difference uh -huh. between my family and Sarah has to deal with that. I try to be mindful of it. Sarah's family and my family are different in many, many ways. Alcoholism is a big one from starting. Um, but they, my family... <laughs> Why is it 10 cents there? There's 15 cents on the floor. What's going on over there? <laughs> I'm trying to pay you for the pod. By the way, I got to... <laughs> Jesus, thank God it's leather. I got to say, I was so resistant to the video for so long, but if you're not watching this, you're missing out on a lot of gags. A lot of gags. All kinds of gags. I just dropped gum out of my mouth here, folks. <laughs> this is soaked. There's a napkin here. Oh, get the nap. You're good. The cat... Oh, watch oh, the cat. Jesus the cat Christ. owns the table. That's his table. 
Easy there, big fella. There we go. Get on. By the way, subscribe Woo. to the YouTube. My fucking father has more YouTube subscribers than this podcast has. I know. What the hell? <laughs> that was a keeper. All right. Oh, that was basic. I don't know if you can keep a fart. <laughs> All right. Keep the change, you filthy animal. But <laughs> that was like it spilled. Uh, I like. Okay. I, like well, I sat on a juice box. Oh but wow! The cat took it. To, took it to the lair. Woo. But, uh Yeah. Good time. That live music thing. I, I told you something about live music. It's special. Look, we can all hear a tune on the radio, but when you hear that guy strumming the old banjo right in front of your peepers, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Plus, you can see the finger. It doesn't make sense. I mean, the guy's fifty-eight years old. His fingers are moving uh, faster than uh, my career's going down the shitter. It's just. I'm like, this is insanity. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. I know. It, it just unbelievable. And I, just a great trip to Austin. And by the way, Sunday, I'll just real quick, I stayed an extra day because I knew I was going to be stressed because I did. Oh, I forgot about the shows. Two shows at the Paramount. So many Tuesdays sold out both with, with COVID restrictions. But I'll take it. Yeah. So not packed. Feels Because the people that were there are going to be like, it wasn't sold out. There was 75 empty seats next to me. But with the restrictions, it was packed. It's not your fault. Gays came. Appreciate it. Love you. It felt so cool to have the name and lights right downtown. You got that right. And I, I booked an extra day because I knew I was going to be tired. And I went back to South Congress, went to Magnolia again. They said 45-minute wait. I said, I don't care. I had the Sox game streaming. I sat outside <laughs> and just felt... So grateful, great time, and then just real quick. Yeah, please. So I went out and uh, walked all over South Congress, had this great day. It was beautiful. Then I went back to the hotel, swam, worked out, and it was like 6.30, and I'm like, do I want to go back out? It's still nice out, but I'm like, I can't just sit here for six more hours. No. And so I was like, fuck, but I was scared because there's all these crazy fucking homeless, and I'm like, I feel like I'm gambling every time I go out there. Can't you get out of that area, get an Uber? That's what I did. I went, I Ubered to Zilker Park at sunset. I bought a new oh. camera. I took some photos, and then I was taking photos, having a nice time. Hey, Salad Cues, and I'm, I'm walking under the bridge, and I see a crowd of people, like 100 people on the, the knoll. Mm, grassy. Like, They're watching the bats. I love the bats. I forgot about the bats. The bats. So I, I lay down. A piece of grass is like three smoking hot cowgirl women right in front of me, and I, wow. I started. They, they started chatting me up. They're like, do you know what time the bats come? And I'm Ooh. like, I know what time I come. It's in five minutes. Yeah, let's but, get COVID. The bats. So we sat there and watched the bats, and it's like spiritual. They go, there's like 500,000 bats. I don't know how many bats, but I, I watched Batman. the bats, and I, I walked back, and then I was like, I don't want to walk to the homeless. It's scary. They almost accosted me, but I went, ah, what are you doing? You queef. Shut up. Who cares? Walked through. It was totally hey, fine. There you go. Best best trip of my life. I loved it. Wow. Oof. Man, that is a beautiful story. It's nice being alone and doing that kind of stuff, too, sometimes, because you had all the family. You had all the shows. You entertained 800 people, literally. Yes. And then you're like, all right, this is some me time. Sunset. Some uh, some terrifying corona ridden uh, rabid. Uh, what do you call it? Rodents? What is a bat? I think it's a uh, an amphibian. It's not a mammal. Maybe it's a yeah. Maybe it's, it's a, not a bird or a plane. It's I think Superman. It's, uh, what is it? Not a rodent. Is it a rodent? I don't think it is a rodent. I think it's. I don't. I never a, know those amphibians. Croatian? I don't know, uh, but they're cuter than you think. Bats no. got a bad name. No, look at I follow the. I started following the thing, Austin Bat Sanctuary or some bullshit. They're kind of cute. They're ah. pink and like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, we gotta get you laid, buddy. But uh, either way, good times. Uh, I had a weird thing, and I know we gotta wrap this puppy up no, with, no, a, go. With, Fuck a, it. with a condom here, but. So I did a Hartford, Connecticut with the old Doug Key. We did a queef. Check that out. That We did a car queef, like old days. And uh, fun weekend. Good good room. Good crowds. Tuesdays came out. The whole thing. Connecticut's fun because I feel like I'm there every two minutes. You, you drive in. You drive out. Right, yes. You know, you drive there the day of the show. You get right in. Bada bing, bada boom. Then we did two shows Saturday and sold them out, sold shirts, and just jumped in the car and went home. That's a good feeling. I it's love an In-N-Out. Love an In-N-Out burger and a decent movie with Kevin Klein. But uh, I had a moment in the hotel that really was uh, kind of significant. Ooh, oh boy. So, you know, I'm in this shitbox hotel. You know, it's like a Fairfield Inn or whatever the fuck it's called. Right. And, uh, you know, it's shit breakfast and bad coffee and ugly people. And... <laughs> 
So the last day, I'm packing up all my stuff to go bring the suitcase to the car to go to the club, and then we go home after. So you ever have this in a hotel? We're in hotels a lot. I got the suitcase in my hand, the duffel. I walk out, and I'm in show attire. So I got like a button-down on and whatever. My hair is quaffed. I just got out of the shower. I'm walking down the hallway, and then these two gals, like, I don't know, eight, eight years old, come out of their room, and now we're in the hallway together, which is fine, but they're kind of like, oh, who's this old guy? What's going on here? And then we both go to the elevator, and they're like, ugh. I don't think they're scared or anything, but they're like, he's an adult. Right. Things are weird now. Sure. And I I was aware of this, and I'm I'm not an adult. I'm a fucking tar douche, you know? Who sure. am I? I'm about to go tell dick jokes for an hour and drink uh, tequila and shit my pants. Uh-huh. But they don't know that. They see a, a taller guy. I mean, taller than them. They're like this tall. And they see a taller guy who looks maybe kind of serious. got a you know, briefcase thing, a suitcase. We get in the elevator, and they're like, Oh, boy. Terrified. Oh, God. Not terrified like I'm going to snatch him, but they're just like, that's an, that's an adult male. Right. Mr. Mr. Johnson's here. And I, and I was like, uh, I just stood there and I was like, do I make a joke? Should I not say anything? These kids, they looked at me as this, as if I was the principal. Right. Yeah, it's a weird feeling. It's we're weird. Men. We're, we're adults. We're adult men, and it, and it bothered me. I was like, what? Well, no, I want to be like, no, no. I probably like the same cartoons you do. I got a, I got a fucking gack in my pocket, and you know, I'm like, I got playing cards. I like, uh, like, I got a slingshot back here. Like, I'm nobody. Right. It, and that's even worse because if you try to make friends with them, it's even shittier, weirder. Yeah, it's weirder. So I just. You know, it's it's three floors down the elevator, so I just stood there uh, as a guy would, and uh, the door opened. I said, "Hey, you you kids, uh, sc- scamper, run along uh, now, yeah, <laughs> scamper!" And they bolted out of that elevator, and then they had all their gal friends in the lobby, and they were doing like a little slumber party or some shit, but. It was a bummer to be the old guy now. Yeah, we're adults, we're men, and I, it, it, it's it's weird. I got like gray shit. I'm yes. like Cal Ripken over here, right. and we're assholes. We're almost forty years old. And I know it's weird. And then you think like we're older than our teachers were. Like ah. some of our teachers that were like old men. It's very bizarre because I got teachers and or whatever people, uncles that are like still around now, and they look. To me, they look like young-ish. Yeah. So you're like, they must have been like 25 when we were teenagers. Yeah, but you saw them as adults. Yeah, I saw them as old men. So we're we're old bags. I mean, it's almost all over for us. It's all over, and I can't wait for it to end. But uh, I remember I saw a photo of my dad recently. Just randomly found a box of photos, which is like out of a dumb rom-com. I'm like, oh, I got a glass of wine. I'm in a nighty, you know? It's like Bridget Jones' diary over here. And I found a photo, and I looked at the back of it. Remember the back of the photo had the little date printed on yeah, it? Yeah, you'd write things on yeah, the photo. Yeah, it was like a Walgreens d- developed photo and I look on the back and it was something something I did the math and my dad was 33 in the photo and he's got me down here and I'm you know scruffy and douchey and I'm a dirty skin, skin knee and I got the weird uh, ring around the collar and he's got a full black suit on a head of black hair and a briefcase and shiny black shoe he was a lawyer right and I'm like this guy's 33 he's a homeowner with two young kids and a and a dumb wife and I'm like I'm 37. I live in a shoebox. I talk about my asshole on a mic, a microphone. I know time marches on. It's strange, but uh, but I mean, you, you minimize the we're in a shoebox and an asshole. But hey, we, we pursued a dream. We're making a nice living, so that's not bad. But that's you forget because I get fucked up because I'm like, he's old now. He's towards the end, but he had his prime. His time is to be old now, and then we'll have our time. That's old. You know Wait, what I mean? No, it's all I don't get your it. Time. I, don't, I don't know what that means. Well, I, I feel like I'm sitting there going, God, this guy's 70 years old. Now, I don't know how old he is now, your dad, but you're like, he's 70. He can't walk as well. He doesn't have the black hair anymore. Look sure. at him here. He's so young and full of life. It's unfair. It's crazy. But you're like, well, that was just his time to be in his prime and young and healthy uh-huh. or whatever. And it was his dumb decision to have two kids like an idiot. Sure. But now he's old. It's his time to be old, but he's still not dying. And then he'll be dying. And it'll be his time to be dying. I guess so. I guess to him, having those two kids in a home and a and a like he's in a in a in a courtroom going, I object at thirty seven. Isn't that crazy? It's insane. It's I mean, insane. I don't even understand that. It doesn't. I can't even wrap my head around. I it. know it's wild. And and, I'm, and but I mean, you could say the same. Like this guy was at the Paramount Theater ripping it in front of four hundred. Clams, like that's crazy too, in a way. It's all perspective. Yeah, I mean, there's times like this weekend I was at Mohegan Sun, and there's times where I'm like, 
there's all there's there's some people you could be like wow like there's a bunch of people here to see me they know me they listen to me they appreciate i'm a part of their lives but then i'm like there's a lot of empty seats i'm at a casino what am i doing (laughs) i've been coming here for 15 years this is pathetic everyone's in a wheelchair they're fat it smells weird i lost 300 bucks like an asshole right there's that too Uh, you know i i I don't i can't play the mandolin gnome's good at it you know this it's all perspective it is it is yeah we and we got to be great this there's wackos listening to this right now while jerking it or driving to poughkeepsie or whatever the hell it is beating their wives so yeah, I mean we've accomplished a lot. You've been on the Tonight Show. You got I was on the Tonight o. Show. Letterman, Conan, a couple times. Yes. The other one, who's the other guy there? They, Corden. Corden, that yeah, one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's something, I guess. But uh, but then you think, no wonder we're scared of having kids, or you don't even want kids. I think about it sometimes, but nah, I've thought about it. Well, no wonder. But if I'm in an elevator and it's bothering me that these two tykes are are like, oh god, a, an adult. I'm like, how the fuck am I going to stomach the idea of actually raising a Well, grief? that's your kid. That's a lot easier. I guess. You I like guess. the kid. You love the kid. The whole thing. I just can't. I don't know if I can go, hey, Sonny, sit down. Quiet down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. It's odd. It's very odd. No, I've had. I spend a lot of time with my nieces and nephews. You have to discipline them. It's uncomfortable. You're like, uh-huh. what am I doing? Who cares? Yeah, they're at the restaurant. They're blowing bubbles. And then somebody's going, hey, hey. Come on. You know, like, ah, let them blow the bubbles. I don't know. Uh, right. Well, that's the kind of parent you can be. You got to uh, pick so. and choose your battles and your assholes sure. and figure out when to finger them and when not to. <laughs> that's that's the big question, but uh, maybe one of the perks of having a kid. But uh, either way, thanks for listening. We got to wrap this puppy up with a bow. We'll see you in hell. What do you, you got some dates cooking there? Sloppy uh, yeah, I think so. Well, I'm in Royersford tomorrow with uh, Matt Wayne again. Big! special guest if you know what i mean i think you do he is fat and uh jordan jensen will be there as well fun little group there yep the big group good group big four and james madden will be there so it's gonna be a great time i I got a couple new things and i gotta gotta bring the guest because i i I only write three minutes a month i (laughs) I know it's tough and they these uh these kooks they hear it all so yeah so uh soul joel's royersford tomorrow night and then i'm in des moines in kansas city in june i don't know the exact date but uh, check the websites. I'll be there. And then uh, check out Joe and Ron on. It's on YouTube. I know you hate Ron on, and they don't have to keep telling me. He's terrific. He's very smart. He's very funny. He's a brilliant comic. And uh, we just did Jaws and Jurassic Park, which was fun. I hate Jurassic Park. I think it's a piece of shit. What? Jaws is the best movie ever. And some guy wrote to me. He's like, let me guess. You and Ron on hate Jaws. And I'm like, are we putting out that vibe? I'm like, I think we're, we hate the right movies, if you ask me. But Well, of course, if you ask you. But well, can I just ask, in a one sentence, what do you not like about Jurassic Park? The script. It's Got horrible. It. It's <laughs> cliche. It's ridiculous. And it's, a, it's, for, it's for kids. I'll say this. <laughs> it's for kids. It's a movie for kids. And I think I summed it up perfectly on the podcast. Go check it out. Jaws. He, Steven Spielberg's like, I'm going to make the best movie ever. Jurassic Park, he was like, mm. I'm going to make the biggest movie ever. Uh, and that's the difference. Well, the book Jurassic Park is supposed to be amazing. It was this thick. I couldn't I pretended read it. to read it. I had. I, I was one of those guys. Thing. who was like, I read it. It was yeah. crazy. It was <laughs> that thick. Yeah, my mom loved it as a kid. She, she's a she's a kooky nerd. But uh, yeah, all right. So the script is bad. I think it's uh, it's terrible. It's goofy. It's silly. The it's, premise it's is thing. great. The premise is great. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I don't want to redo the whole podcast. Okay. Go check it out. But uh, you know the. Newman's fun. Newman's great. Wait, what was uh, I going to say about it? Uh, Newman's fun. Uh, uh, What's his name? Is so sexy. Uh, Oh, Goldblum. Goldblum. Ooh, that's a hot heeb. Wait, what was the fucking thing I was going to say? The movie, the script. Sam Neill. Ah, shit. Well, that's what it was. Like, Jaws is for adults, and that's why it's Ah. great. If they made Jurassic Park for adults, it would probably be great. Interesting. Like a a fucking scary, weird horror movie, but they made it for kids. I, I thought it was scary as a kid, yeah, but I saw it when I was 10. Right, and, and Rana had the good point that only the shitty people get killed, which makes it less ah, scary. Good point, good point. Yeah, that's so Hollywood, too. Right, but anyways. He ate the lawyer. Check it out. That was a good tease, though. I think that'll people will be interested. That is a tease. All right, all right. You got me intrigued, and my uh, Spidey jizz is tickling. Is that it? Good on dates? I think that's it. Yeah, I got nothing.
I got a ton of cum guzzling dates coming. I got some rough ones and some good ones. Uh, we're doing Virginia Beach with Fat Chris Al. We're doing uh, Toledo. We're doing uh, Houston again. We're doing uh, all kinds. It's all on MarkNormanComedy.com. Check it out. Check out our specials on YouTube. We got uh, albums on the Spotify's, the Pandora's, the Grinders. And, uh, yeah, praise Allah. Thanks for listening. Get on that Patreon if you're not. You're missing out. It's about to... To the moon, baby. It's, it's about insane. To cook. Great stuff on there. We were lying before. We're like Conan. Tonight actually is good. Yes. Here, here. Remember we're to always queer. do that bit. Yeah, good Every bit. Every night I'd do that bit. Comedy. So this time I mean it. All right. Thank you. Ah.